Frank Winston here for the Pacifica Historical Society and host of the show Footprints of Pacifica, where we explore and discover the lure and lore of lovely Pacifica, its character and its characters. Our show this week focuses on some of the early days of Pacifica, and we are pleased to have in the studio with us Ed Graham and Frank Maffei, both members of the Colma Historical Society. And Frank, in particular, has taken many photographs of Pacifica and the coast side before it was a city. And Ed is a member of the Colma Historical Society. Some of the photographs you will soon see are from slides in a collection in the archives of the Pacifica Historical Society. We'll now take a look at the slides and hear some commentary what they represent. Gentlemen, welcome. That's early day, uh, Lindemar Beach, uh, with the railroad running in the bottom of the picture. I would say that's around 1908. That's uh, Rockaway Beach with the right of way of the railroad at the bottom of the picture. And I don't know if there's any tracks on it or not, but you can also see old Highway 1 uh, at the upper right, which was later replaced. And that's the early day picture of Rockaway. The Ocean Shore Railroad with the cut there at uh, uh, Highway 1, somewhere there, but uh, very few structures. So that had to be around 1967. And that's just north of uh, the beach, no, just north of um, San Gregorio Beach, probably at low tide. And the railroad cut was being made at the upper left hand of the picture, but you can't tell. And that's where the construction ended. it. That's and this one? probably the same beach of the locals. That was popular to take the train to the beach from San Francisco, right, for right. example. The, the tracks ended at, uh, what's the name of the creek? Tanitas Tanit Creek, Tanitas Tanit 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 Glen. Tanit Tanit well, that's me in 1948 uh, at the age of 17, acting like a clown. Well, you didn't and take that, that picture yourself. <laughs> Someone else took that of you. That's just south of, uh, uh, well, right at Devil's Slide. And that's uh, the truck of the Garden Valley Nursery with a load of man horse manure on its way to Morse Beach to put on the, on the ground for the raising of the flowers. But the manure came from here, this From area. the Daly City Colma area and another shot. And you can see Linda Marr in the background before it was built up. So this was 47 or 48. By way of reference, Colma became a city when? 1924. But the area around there was called Colma. Now that's right at Devil's Slide. And, and if you can see, there's one person there, at the, and that's Don Garibaldi, who is a big time flower grower down the coast now. That's 1947 or 48. Same gentleman, same location. Those were taken by you? No. Uh, that was taken by me. There was three of us, and mm -hmm. do you ever expect that at the time you took those, they'd be part of an archive? I know, but I'm glad they are, and I appreciate it. But that's uh, 1948, and that's a, a Garden Valley truck. But uh, that's the exact spot where the the trouble trouble spot of uh, where it's been caving in all these years at Devil's Slide. That's up by Daly City on Highway, original Highway 1. Was that also called the Coast Side Highway? That was the Coast Side Highway, which was built in 1937, but uh, replaced um, in 62, I think. That's uh, Peter Point and the Ocean Shore Railroad right away to the left, 1957. When were those tracks picked up, or were they? They were, the track was abandoned in 1920 okay. and pulled in 1920. Now that's when I crawled down to the right of way with a dangerous location as you can see, but if you look closely at the bottom of the picture, you can see where the flat spot was and that was the right of way of the railroad. And that's Shelter Cove, that's about 84 or whatever, um, I took that picture. And that's the railroad right of way? That's the railroad right of way, yeah. it's Shelter Cove to the left and the bottom. That's 1957, and uh, uh, that's yeah. Highway 1 right at the spot that's been caving in all these years. 
Is that in any way connected with the vote that was taken in 1957 to found Ocean, uh, Pacifica? To find it? No. No, it was I, <laughs> And that's the Highway 1 taken from the Ocean Shore right away in uh, Green Valley, 1957. And that's uh, probably 1957 again when it had a slide, a devil's slide. You can see all the equipment there. Looks like it was rather dangerous if you're just walking by to catch a view and you're not careful. Well, that's why they call it devil's slide. That's the uh, Ocean Shore Depot at El Granada, 1957. It had been, been changed quite a bit. It was a restaurant at that time, I think. It never became the hotel that it was no, supposed to be. No, this is um, Montara, 1957. On a Sunday, as you can see, with traffic backed up. Is that for people going to Half Moon Bay or just? No, that's going north. The, the traffic was northbound. That's uh, a Tobin Station there at the point. Named after one of the creators, the right. banker and lawyer that right. founded the right. Ocean Shore Investment Company. And that's uh, Shelter Cove with the right of way to the left. That's about 1957 also, where the tunnel was right at the point which was blasted shut in the 20s. That's uh, Peter Point in 1957 with the ocean shore right away in the foreground and as you can see the hill at the, in the upper left wasn't Go ahead. it wasn't developed as much and that's a devil slide with obviously the rock con constantly coming down and on a right away on a road That's right at the point. Everybody's familiar with that. Sometime in the 80s, they took that. Are you ever living in Pacifica? No, but my uh, uncle had a ranch in Lindemar in 1923. That's Devil's Slide again, right at the spot that's been always caving in its original location. It has dropped about 30 feet since 1948 when that picture was taken. And that's Highway 92 just east of uh, Half Moon Bay where you could stop and get water from uh, coming right out of the mountain. That was the best water I ever tasted. But now you can't do that because they discontinued that. And that's uh, Montara Beach, probably in the 80s. And that's the Coast Highway at, De at uh, Thornton, near Thornton Beach in Daly City, with Muscle Rock in the, in, the, in the distance. And they always had a hard time keeping that open because of constant slides. You're hearing from Frank Maffei, who took many of these slides. This is uh, Shelter Cove again, taken from the right of way of the ocean shore, the original right of way. I it might have been 83. And that's 57 again, and uh, backed up traffic northbound on the original Highway 1. At uh, Montara? No, that's uh, Rockaway. Oh, at Rockaway. Sorry. Rockaway. That's uh, Peter Point again with all the little cabins, which are long gone, I believe. Right, Frank? I understand there's a few left. Yeah. And you couldn't build there today. And that's a motorcycle uh, hill climb in 1957 there by Shamrock Ranch and some guy going down a hill instead of up. He's going to lose the race. Well, <laughs> and that's another j rider going uphill. I don't think he's going to make it because of probably the next shot he's going backwards if they do show it. You were up there that day to cover the motorcycle? Or you well, I was just interested. Good. There he goes. He's going belly up. And you can see the valley in the background. It wasn't developed as much 
1957. Did they have crowds lining the oh, Yeah, boats? on each side, yeah. Oh, there goes it. That one is sideways, the, the photo. <laughs> Today, that picture would. And that's uh, Devil Slide, I would say, in 83, taken. This, this one here was taken by my son in 1983. When the road was closed because of the damage. Another picture from my son took in 83. The same spot has been sliding down a hill many years since 1937 when they built it. And now, as we speak, it's going to be repaired and restored at some right. point. Same location, looking north. That's been always a trouble. But troublesome spot. Yeah, it didn't discourage people from riding that route. Well, another, <laughs> another shot my son took. And Either for access or if they wanted danger in their life. And the next shot. You can see part of the old highway, and that's uh, right near a Shamrock uh, Ranch which is below, and that's uh, all the, what they call the K-rails, right? Uh, yes, that, uh, yes, that's correct. Stop to, so nobody can get by. And that's, uh, I'd say in the 80s, I took that of the highway, but also you can detect the ocean shore right away, somewhere there. And that's, 1983, another shot that my son took right. and kept caving in. Another lo location right there at the same spot where it's always been troublesome. You make reference to the right of way. The tracks have been pulled up. Yeah, but, well, the tracks the were right pulled up. And it still exists if they wanted to well, use yeah, if, it. If they, didn't, if they hadn't built the highway, you could see the whole right of way. And now that's where they, in 83, that, that my son took this, and this is where they, you couldn't get past the location. That's back at Devil's Slide. They had a monitor right there in that little square uh, uh, movement monitor, so if the the highway moved, they would uh, send a signal to Caltrans that the, the thing was given away again. Same location. You can see part of the original highway to the left with the white line. It just keeps caving in. Ed, what was Caltrans' role at this point in time? Well, it's, since it's a state highway, it, excuse me, Caltrans' job is to, of course, maintain it and repair it. and. Uh, I assume they were in the process of repairing it at that time. I took that picture uh, from the old original Highway 54, I think, at the top of uh, Montero Mountain. Same location, looking north northwest. Uh, and you can see the part of the ocean shore right away. And that's me on the left. and. Uh, my buddy on the right who is now deceased on the old Highway 54 over Montara Mountain. That's in 1955, I think. It's my buddy then at the old highway. Very picturesque through that area. A lot of people use it for biking now, from what I understand. Meaning bicycle? Bicycle, or what, bike, motorcycle. Biking, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking. And that's uh, Highway 1 before the freeway where it came down from the top of the hill and met the old highway. You can tell from the model of the cars. Well, yeah, at my age. <laughs> but anyway, uh, to the upper right is where the freeway came down. Now, this is before the freeway was built. And the off-ramp used to go to the old uh, Half Moon Bay Road, which went down into the valley. Uh, then they, Caltrans filled that all in and built the freeway. That's where, and this is taken from the top of Montara, the old highway, looking north towards Lindemar. And that's uh, 
probably 57, not 57, man. In the 80s, that's the old high, Half Moon Bay Highway, and you can see they're grading for the freeway between Highway 1 and uh, uh, up on the top of the hill, High uh, Skyline Boulevard. And that's there by Manor in 1947 when it wasn't developed. And that's one of the little rare Austin Healy's, I think, cars. And that's going southbound somewhere in Manor there. And you can tell by the auto that's <laughs> about 1946 or 47. And there's a few shops in Manor at that time. Well, that's, <laughs> and this is, uh, I think it's Montara Beach. And that was my group before I, I went down and met him. And that's a 1951, a devil slide, looking north at the same location that's been troublesome. Oh, 19, sounds, 1951. Sounds like you like to spend some of your Sundays just looking at troubled well, spots. Uh, the same same year, 1951, say around looking southbound, look south. They, uh, that one, Frank. That's at Montara Beach, and that's Mr. Don Garibaldi with his girlfriend, and I took the shot without him knowing. Did his girlfriend know? <laughs> well, evidently they did. <laughs> but, uh, and that's the uh, same location, the same group, I think. You're hearing from Frank Maffei and Ed Graham on some of the pictures of Scenic Pacifica in its yesteryears. And that's 1946, and that's my buddy's 30. Uh, 35 Plymouth, right at the spot where it's been caving in all these years before the thing started caving in. And uh, there wasn't much traffic back in those days, so, and that's in, back in 51 at Thornton Beach in Daly City, and that's my 38 Chevy. And you can see the road is still very muddy and what have you. Who's they would have to include my old girlfriend. My wife is not going to like this, Frank. <laughs> you don't have to give any names at all. <laughs> okay. This is a, a Thornton Beach uh, parking lot, which is long gone because the thing washed away. And this is uh, an early day map that I just emailed to uh, Kathleen a while back, showing the ocean shore right away between Santa Cruz and San Francisco with the 26 miles interruption. And anyway, that's uh, El Granada, what I can tell, yeah. The picture, anyway. And the picture on the right is at uh, Mission Street and Alameda, but the ocean shore was down below on that trestle. That's in that's San what, Francisco. Now. That's San Francisco. And on the left, it must be Mission Street. Okay, this is uh, Broadmoor in Daly City, uh, 1948. <laughs> That's Lake Merced, dead center of the photo. And if you look close, you probably could see some of the right away of the ocean shore. And that's uh, in San Francisco, the ocean shore right away near north, south of Silver Avenue. I forget the name of the street, and that's a church. Alamany, uh, Alameda was the right of way of the ocean shore between San Francisco and Juniper Serra Daily City. This is a trestle at uh, Palmer Guts Trestle at just one mile south of Tanitas Glen or Tanitas Creek. That held the railroad that, during the early days. That was the last trestle built, and that's the, me when I was 26. The I'm railroad the, actually did not operate that far south. It stopped at Tanitas Creek. They never. Tanitas uh, Glen, yeah. What, what Never got to Santa Cruz. That, that structure would have still been in place if it wasn't for some local tore it down to use the timber to, to build a garage, but the local uh, rangers stopped them from stealing all the, uh, the structure. But 
some of the remnants are still there. And that's another shot that I took. And you see, we're starting to get a little saggy after 60 years. And that's what's left of it in the mid-1960s, after it was pulled down by that person. The developer? The one that used Self-help. Self self -help. What's that? Self-help developer. Self-help, yeah. And that's on the, uh, along the coast in Daly City, uh, the old Highway 1. And, uh, I probably took shots of the of the side hill supports that the Devil's uh, the Ocean Shore put in. You can see it right dead center of the picture of the big timbers that they attempted to hold up the right of way because of all the sandy soil. These are all 12 by 12 redwood timbers bolted together, and that's a good shot of one. I, I believe they're still in place there. Ke uh, I, I checked with Caltrans, and they didn't install no such things. They, <clears throat> because uh, redwood was a little expensive back in late. There's another shot of the side hill supports that held up the railroad along the beach. Did redwood and, come from this area or no, more further up to north, Redwood City uh, or no, no, up north? No, up north. Or in? Further. And that's another side hill support showing its age. It was all sandy soil, and they had a heck of a time keeping the right-of-way in place. Not only the railroad, but the Highway 1, and that's another shot. And if you attempted to do that nowadays, the red would be extremely expensive and non-prohibitive. And the highway was just above up. That's the ocean shore at Rockaway sometime in the early 1900s with artichoke plants right in the foreground. That was major agriculture at the time. Yeah, exactly. And, uh... Ed? That, looks like a view from Pedro Point, is yeah, that right? Yeah, right. I yeah. probably took that, yeah. Yeah. On a nice clear day. Yeah. Yeah, I took that. That's uh, Shelter, Shelter Cove. Cove. Yes. And uh, there were quite a few residents at that time in the 80s. And that's Devil's Slide. Showing. That's yeah, that looks like double Ed? slide again, I think. Yeah, I, yes. yeah. Just take it from a different angle. That's uh, me in 1983 on the Ocean Shore right away, midpoint between uh, Pedro Point and uh, Saddle Cut. We, I went down by myself in 57. Now that's in 1957 I took that. You can see most of the right of way. I was down there in 57 and 1983. And the railroad right of way is on the lower left side of the photo. Right. Yeah. right. Were you given free access to go? Or you well, it's to... difficult, difficult to get to. You had to be young for one thing. So that if you can see, that's uh, right. Midway between, like I said, uh, Peter and Point and Saddle Cut, and you can see a piece of rail still left over. Now you can see the right of way of the railroad and the highway. In the level spot below the highway, you can see where the railroad ran, just on a pure granite ledge, no wider than yeah. 20 feet. As I understand it, where the highway began to rise, the railroad right. kept going straight. And that's looking going. north at the south end of the where the south end of the. 300 foot tunnel was on the ocean shore. And that's where Ransom, uh, the Ransom quarry was. And that's the roll of the slides. Now, further from Ed Graham and Frank Buffet. Uh, Ed, you're active with the Coma Historical Society. 
Can you give yeah. us a little background on how it came to be and your role in that? Well, I think the uh, Coma Historical Society was founded about 10, Nin 10 years ago or 1993. so. 1993. 1993. I think what got it, what, uh, got it started was to, uh, to the need to save the old Coma uh, railroad station, which had been moved from its original location uh, for BART construction. And uh, so the uh, association was formed and, uh, to preserve that station. More so than to record history. Well, and period. to record history also. And uh, subsequently, they, uh, the, city, the city of Coma built a uh, Coma cultural park uh, Near the, uh, across the street from the Olivet Cemetery, and uh, they've uh, constructed a museum there. And they've uh, moved the railroad station and the freight shed to that site, and they've all, they've been restored. And uh, the, the association now has an extensive archive of of the memorabilia about uh, about Colma and the railroad and the cemeteries, the 17 cemeteries that are located in Colma. And Frank, I understand you were important in rescuing a piece of railroad equipment. Oh, you at mean some the, point. The, the switch stand? Yeah, the railroad switch. Do you have that here? Yeah, that. Talk about it. Yeah, tell us uh, a little that more. That switch stand, uh, I was with PG&E. We had a, a reconstruction project on the gas system and. Uh, um, um, uh, with the Cove, what the, I forget the name now. Right, Shelter Cove. Shelter, Shelter Cove. Shelter. I'm sorry, but uh, and we came to one location where the uh, gas meters were, and this railroad switch stand <coughs> was right next to the meters. And I asked the lady of the house, "Well, where did this come from?" And she and she said that uh, a couple of the young fellows had gone around the point at low tide and found this struck this uh, piece of steel and brought it back and didn't know what it was. I knew what it was, and she says, if you want to take it, and yeah. in the ensuing weeks, we wheelbarrowed it out, and, and we painted it, and it ended up in Novato in my son's house for a few years, and then I came in contact with Kathleen, and I says, uh, Now it belongs to the Historical nah, I says, Society. Well, I might as well donate it back to where it came from, so I donated it to, uh, okay. and that's... Gentlemen, we're running out of time, and well, so I have to thank you for being here with your slides and your commentary. And uh, Ed, Graham, and Frank Maffei, so much for Footprints of Pacifica. And remember, lives of great men all remind us we can make our lives sublime. And departing, leave behind us footprints in the sands of time.